dear. It's all gone black. Don't want that, do we? Ahoy, shipmates! I had a spot of black screen then. I, I was trying something on my broadcasting software and clearly I had the wrong settings there. What a glorious day here in the port of Southampton, shipmates. Although it's not quite as warm as you'd have. As you'd think it was, got that 18 centigrade at the moment, the temperature, and it's on its way down. I have quite a reasonable wind gusting somewhere near the 20 knots, which is quite gusty. So, oh, we have quite a busy night. Oh, yeah, let's, 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 uh, let's, have a, let's have a quick look at this. So, Queen Mary 2 has already started departing. Uh, we have a look over on the map, and there you go. She can, you can see she's over at the upper swing ground, just going for a swing. She'll probably be on screen in a about 15 20 minutes i would estimate something like that uh yep so we've got uh, uh go back to the list yep so we've got queen mary 2 already departed be on screen about 50 minutes we had then we have the seven seas splendor for some reason there's a problem with the is today so even though it looks like the seven seas splendor is parked right across the horizon terminal that's not actually the case she is actually alongside berth like the gardenier is there but so uh, Seems to be some sort of bug in the AIS, much to our amusement earlier when all the ships were on the land and it looked like some massive hurricane had been through port and blown all the ships sideways. So we have the Seven Seas Splendor. Then, after the Seven Seas Splendor, we have, well, actually, I say after, but it's almost at the same time. We then have a, the Tanya and Arcadia. And again, it looks like Arcadia has uh, seen some heavy winds there and is parked right across the grain silos. Yeah, it's a little bit wonky today. So yeah, so that's four ships and three of them leaving at the same time. And I think Queen Mary 2 is running a little late. So frankly, I'd call that four ships almost, le almost, almost leaving simultaneously. I'm guessing that uh, because... Arcadia is right at the end here. She's uh, she's actually pointing towards the down south and towards. There we go. She's corrected herself, so she'll probably just nip straight off. Uh, Britannia is pretty much going to do the same thing. She doesn't need to come out in reverse, so she'll probably nip straight off as well. And then the Seven Seas Splendor is well. We're not quite sure which way the Seven Seas Splendor is pointing from, from Frank. From Frank here, it's uh, I'm guessing straight as well. So she'll probably go straight off as well. But Queen Mary Two is still still spinning up there, and uh, it appears that the uh, HMM Le Havre is also docked rather heavily into STC5 berth. Now we can see Britannia on the ocean terminal and we can't see Arcadia because she's just behind the bow of Britannia. But if we flick across here, we can see Arcadia. There's Arcadia, sim similar to Britannia. Very, you know, with the distinctive Union Jack on the bow, but not quite as big a ship. As you can see, there's got quite a few more balconies on there. Arcadia is quite a bit older. I can't, I can't remember if it's Arcadia at the Raw is the oldest one. I should, uh, I've should got a list somewhere and I keep losing it. Quick look on Cow's Camp. Not a lot going on. There's a few yachts around. I thought it'd be a bit more today, really. It's a lovely day for it. Uh, we're in Cam. We can see the top of Britannia. There we go. Right. Oh, there's plenty of shipmates in the chat already. Like I say, we should be, I reckon, where we, what are we now? We are 36 minutes past the hour. I would say somewhere in the region of quarter two, we'd probably have Queen Mary 2 on screen. We'll follow her down Southampton Water, and then the others will start racing away and making chase. Of course, we have our excellent spanners in the chat already. Uh, Mark G and Bay Blue are here. I see the pack Andrew is here, and Tizzy C, of course, he's here as well. Oh, there, Anna Henderson. Oh, oh, there, Leslie Clark says, Hope everyone's well and also new to the channel. Well, welcome aboard, shipmates. Oh, there seems to be a few new shipmates recently. It's excellent. Well, Mark G was uh, just saying that the Queen Mary 2 is the upper swing ground. Yep, they've got that. Just whizzing through the chat. Rab Nesbitt's here. Are we there, shipmates? Oh, yes, and Elizabeth G said she had a Lancaster bomber fly past her house. That's very unusual. It's a 
Because you didn't catch a little video though, should we? So we've got here Katie Price, or Kathy Price, sorry. Ahoy there, shipmate. And ahoy there, Martin Evans. Oh, M. Carter says, uh, ahoy, shipmates, and a three leaving at six. Is that a record? Ooh, good question, shipmate. It's very unusual. Uh, I have seen, we've definitely had multiples leaving at the same time. Have we had three before? I don't know. If I'm honest. Could be, could be a record. Uh, do you know what I'm going to put on? Mm, let me have it. Let me think. I'm going to do something here. What am I going to do? I'm going to put on the sound from Itching Cam because I've got a distinct feeling there's going to be some honking and hooting going on today. What with the ships passing each other. Don't know, but I've got that feeling. But yes, is that a record? Says M. Says Ship M. Carter. I don't know if it's a record or not. I think we've I definitely had four sh uh, five cruise ships leaving one day and some of them must have left at the same time. But yeah, you're right. It's uh, very unusual to see so many depart at six. There'll be definitely a, a little convoy heading down Southampton Water. We have seen convoys before, but normally they're scheduled to leave at different times and they all end up leaving at the same time. Boy there. Pauline Worrell says, uh, lovely day for a sail to Norway. Oh, yeah, it could be right there, shall we? I think uh, Bay Blue did actually tell me where uh, where Queen Mary 2 was going. Yes, Bay Blue did. So off to the fjords, indeed. Stavanger, Alden, Andelhandel, Andelhausen, Hausen, and Bergen. I'm sure I pronounced the third one correctly there. Yes, ship it. Uh, Probably were indeed a lovely day for a sail to Norway. You might you might uh, I think if you pop the jumper on and as you're going down south out of the water, actually you'll be going with the wind. You might not notice the wind, uh, but you might do across the North Sea. You'll be heading straight into it. Boy there, uh, David Sarafian. Always oh, X. Cunard, QE2 crew. Thanks for making the time to live stream. You've made my day. Watching from landlocked Switzerland. Aha, I guess you've made your fortune on the on the high seas and now you're avoiding all those pesky taxes. No, I, I only jest, shipmate, I only jest. I'm sure there's a very legitimate reason for you living in Switzerland. Apart from the fact it's actually rather nice. All that skiing and chocolate. And restrictions on driving. Queen Mary 2, I have a little update. Shall we go back to the map? Queen Mary 2 is now almost completed the swing. I've noticed this before, that when ships go to the upper swing grounds, they do seem to take a long time. They've got to go, you know, like if the Seven Seas Splendor was pointing where they often go up here, they seem to take a long time meandering along. And then when they stop, they seem to take a really long time to spin around. And then eventually they come forwards. I don't know if it's just the Queen Mary 2 that I'm always seem to be watching that seems to take a long time, or if they just all take a long time. Not sure. I should uh, measure it one day and see uh, see what the difference is. Uh, there's Arcadia on the dock head, and here we are back with Britannia. So, yeah, so I will thank you for that shipmate uh, David Serafin, who was ex Cunard crew. Glad you're watching and enjoying the channel. Welcome aboard, shipmates. Oh, hi there, Carol EJB Travels. Oh, and Pac Andrews said his nieces. I've just said hello to his niece. I have no idea his niece is, but there we go. Oh, are we there, Ellie Murley? Oh, are we there, Kevin? Ah, and Guten Oven to Angie Jakinski from Germany. Oh, and ahoy there, Polly W, who says, daughter and hubby are on the Britannia. They are newlyweds, got married on Saturday. So a big thank you for this stream as we can watch them depart. Well, shipmate, if you uh, send them a little message, tell them to go somewhere on their balcony if they happen to be uh, starboard side and give us a wave and we'll uh, give them a zoom in. Oh, the pack address is uh, his niece is Anna. Oh, that's Anna Henderson. Well, <laughs> Glad you're inviting the family on board, shipmate. Many thanks for spreading the word of the Servant Ships YouTube channel. I'm just 
monitoring the let's have a quick look at the map. So uh, Queen Mary 2 has finished spinning now. She has started moving. So I reckon 10, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, somewhere in that region. Didn't, Queen Mary 2 didn't actually depart at 5 o'clock. More like sort of quarter past. Then... In, well, I'm not really sure what the order is. To be honest, I imagine it's simultaneous because Seven Sea Splendor is going to have to reverse down to the middle swing ground, so it'll take a while. Arcade is right at the very front of Dockhead. She'll uh, nip off sharply. Uh, and then Britannia, as we saw, Britannia is here over on the ocean terminal. Oh, we there, Alison Henders, and welcome aboard, shipmates. Many thanks for subscribing to the channel. Yeah, so we'll have Britannia, Arcadia and Seven Seas Spender all doing at the same time. And Queen Mary 2 won't be on the screen for a little bit. So it's going to be very busy and quick this evening. It's rather unusual, is it? Normally they'd drag out for hours with the ships sort of leaving at uh, distant times. But it's all four ships pretty much leaving port simultaneously. So we have a uh, someone said uh, what's up with VTS? Oh, it's Pack Andrew. Oh, I'm just, uh, VTS is uh, it's a problem problem of installation and locations again. Unfortunately, lots of my installations and locations are at locations that aren't mine, so I have to beg, borrow, and coordinate schedules, which I'm really bad at to try and uh, get them, get into these places. I see we have a shipmate from Germany. It's fantastic. I'm glad to see. Uh, see some, sometimes we have from the States. Anyone, any shipmates not in the UK? Let us, let us know where you're from. So it's interesting to know how far the word of solid ship spreads. And ahoy there, Paula Jones. It says, good evening, campers. I'm very tempted to say uh, Heidi hi to that one. Oh, and our German shipmate is from Northeen, from Westphalia. I'm not sure where that is. Been married to just a approaching Seven Sea Splendor. There we can see that Seven Sea Splendor, not actually. Um, Right across the horizon terminal, actually parallel to the dock, but some seems to be some issue with the AIS at the moment. That's up. I've just realised I've neglected to get up the camera control, so I'm too busy chatting away to all you shipmates. I've forgotten that I do actually need to make sure that I can drive the camera at some point. Uh, which one should we call this? Let's call this one Nelly Cam. Yep. There we go, that's Netly Cam. Got that working, yeah, that's working. Ready for that one. And then we'll call this one Itching Cam. Nothing like being prepared, is there? Oh, with their shipmate, Bob Davis. Welcome aboard, shipmates. Make your way down to the galley and grab yourself a, some grog on the way. Right, let's get the other camera up here. Let's the camera the camera is itching. There we go, all fired up and ready to go. Let's uh, zoom out a bit of there. Fortunately, there's, uh, we're looking into the stretch sun on itching cam. Not not ideal conditions. Oh, it looks like the tide is out as well. Oh, I look back at the weather conditions. What's the tide on there? Oh yeah, it's uh, just a little bit past the low. Wind still gusting though, isn't it? Yeah, not too windy for a tug, but yeah, windy enough to make it unpleasant. We'll see Queen Mary 2 on the right hand side before we see her on cruise cam. Keep an eye out on that, so that's better. Right, I'm all configured now. Somewhat a little resemblance of sort of NASA control over here. Look, I'm monitoring the launch of that, or Elon Musk's latest rockets. I'll be happy if it just takes off. I think that was the verdict, wasn't it? Wasn't too bold if it crashed. Just wanted it to take off.
Right, uh, oh, there's a few people in here. Oh, hey, Lou, we've got some shipmates from around the world. I did ask, didn't I? Let's have a look. Where have we got? Uh, we have uh, shipmate Francis M from the US. And shipmate Christopher Matthews from St. Louis, USA. How's that big arch doing there, shipmate? Ahoy there, Alan. And ahoy there's a wet woman eight who's uh, picking up on the Heidi High references there. Ahoy there, Sean Witt. Sean Witt? Yeah, Sean Witt from New York, originally from Portsmouth. Into the UK tomorrow to join Queen Mary to Tuesday. And ahoy there, Alan Dickerman. Welcome aboard, shipmates. Many thanks for subscribing. Grab yourself uh, some rum down in the galley. Well, that's fascinating, Sean. Originally from Portsmouth, heading down to join Queen Victoria on Tuesday. Brilliant. It's uh, rather he gone from one port to another, although really not very commercial. <coughs> Hi there, John Grisham. Welcome aboard, shipmates. Hello, oh, there. Oh, David Serafines asks in why. Uh, do you know why the ships go? Uh, they used to go past the needles. Do you know why they go past ports? Yeah, they go clockwise around the Isle of Wight. Do I know why? I I did ask this question actually to the VTS controllers, and they weren't entirely sure. They said it's pilot's discretion. My understanding was that there were a few incidents some years ago with uh, not large, not vessels as large as cruise ships, but something a bit smaller, uh, going past Hervis Castle, and it caused a bit of a. I don't think there was an incident as such as nothing crashed or was damaged, but I think they decided that it really wasn't the safest way to go, and it doesn't really, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't save a lot, and it's so much safer to go around the Isle of Wight clockwise rather than trying to get. Well, I'll, do you know what? I've got a map here. I can just show you, can't I? That'd make more sense. Right, here we go. Here's the map. Right. So what David is asking is map. There we go. So what David's asking is, if you can see my cursor here, so the cruise ships tend to come along and they go around the Isle of Wight, round here, past past all the castle, all the forts, round past through the Nab Anchorage and round down to the south. You can't really see my cursor on the screen, it's a bit annoying. Whereas they used to go down here between Hearst Castle, past the Needles and out this way, if that makes sense. Uh, but they don't do that anymore because it's very narrow down here by Hearst Castle where this uh, Tally 2 yacht is. It's very narrow down there. So they like I said, they've gone away from they've gone away from doing that. Yeah. Uh, they've now sticking more to going clockwise round. Yep, I hope that makes sense to everyone. Uh, I think we should shortly be seeing Queen Mary 2 on the screen. Not a little while yet. It'll just be on the right hand side of the screen there. Excellent. I hope, uh, hope that makes sense there, shipmate. Sean Witt, he's, uh, I think he's, remember correctly, that ship, shipmate is an ex Cunard. Living in Switzerland, I think there's one. Hoi there, World 360. Uh, just watching as they have friends on Britannia today. Well done, shipmate. Uh, send them a message, tell them to give us a wave. Uh, shipmate Pez was asking which ship is it? I think it's Britannia. I think we've answered that one. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah. And shipmate Nemo Nemo has answered that one. Very nautical there, shipmate. Uh, shipmate Martin Emerson is saying he's in Cardiff, north, where, north of Cardiff in Wales. I'm not sure that really counts as a foreign country, shipmate. I was thinking more of outside the UK, but oh, I'll let you have that one. It's not England, I suppose. Oh, with well, a Grant Waldo from Colorado. 81 days until they go on Queen Elizabeth for a 14 night Panama Canal cruise. Oh, Panama Canal. I always fancy the Panama Canal. I think it's just the sensation of travelling on a massive ship with only a few inches either side between the, the land. That's got to be fascinating. I'm very envious of the airship, mates. That would certainly be a, a cruise of my choice. Oh, there, Keith B. Asked permission to come aboard. Welcome aboard, shipmates. And also Kevin B. is reporting from New York. Excellent. We have another, another Manhattan mariner amongst our crew. An awful lot of discussion about Brandenburg going on here. I'm not sure it's Chukert Concerto based either. Oh, and hoid there, designed by Jensen from Johannesburg. Well, you'd be in a similar time zone, won't you, mate? Shipmates, so not too bad for you. Our American shipmates must be up quite early, potentially breakfast time for them. So 
quick look from cruise cam. Make sure. Anyone waving? No, nobody waving. It's getting close up, isn't it? Close to waving time. There we go. Uh, where, where have we got to? Oh, uh, oh, this one said they just heard horns. Ah, yeah, if you just heard a horn sound, that unfortunately that's probably my uh, subscriber noise, not actually the noise of a ship. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Oh, shipmate Chris Matthews, who's in St. Louis, says that uh, Arch must say the cladding was cleaned a few years ago. Oh, I bet that'll look lovely and sharp. Then it can get a little. Here we go. I think we can just see on the right hand side of the screen that is the first whiff of uh, Queen Mary 2 coming past. And I think also at the same time, I think we have our shipmate Paul has arrived. Love cruises. Are you there, shipmates? Mm. No. Oh, well, hang on. Something's not working. Just get the camera in position for Queen Mary 2. There we go. Uh, I do have Paul from Love Cruises on the line, but I'm not hearing anything. Uh, it's, uh, what's going on here then? No, don't share screen. Oh, with their shipmate Ray. Welcome aboard. Go and there's the Queen Mary 2. Very distinctive. And I won't, I will try not to call Queen Mary 2 a cruise ship, although I know it does irritate some people. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're all cruise ships rather than uh, container ships or something like that. But uh, technically a cruise liner. So let's see if I can call Queen Mary to the cruise liner she is. What's the difference between an ocean, a cruise ship and an ocean liner, you may ask? Well, it's a very good question, shipmates. Look at that. Number of factors. I think primarily it boils down to speed. Uh, Queen Mary 2 was able to cross the Atlantic somewhere in the region of 32 knots, which is almost 10 knots faster than all the other cruise ships combined. And the second factor is she goes transatlantic. So dot to do dot, coast to coast, country to country, rather than going from port to port. Very a distinctive design, really high freeboard, massive pointy bow. Very elegant indeed. We'll actually, uh, actually, we'll, we'll see on some of the, uh, probably on itching cam, netly cam, uh, due to the sun being on the other side, we'll actually have quite a silhouette. But that's actually, that's actually not a bad thing, Queen Mary too. Uh, it will make uh, make quite a visual treat for us. Should we go on cruise cam any second? Uh, we're at four minutes to six, so I don't know which cruise ship will start departing next. I have to have a look. Once Queen Mary two has gone past. Dockhead, we'll uh, zoom in on Britannia and see what's happening there with the lines. Yes, yeah, give it a go. I'm trying to get Paul from Love Cruises on, but we seem to be having uh, some technical gremlins going on here for some reason. There we go, let's try that. Uh, hi there, Paul. Are you uh, connected? No, I might. It's probably me. Hang on, let's. Uh... Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's probably me. I've got too many things running on this computer to. Uh... Mm -mm -mm. Hang on, I might have to change the settings while while we're not while we're not uh, in the call. Let's have a look. I do like technology and get a little a little hard work sometimes. Uh, hmm. Well, I've 
tried as many settings as I can, but I think that's uh, that seems to be working. And there we have Queen Mary too. I can see that bit of a breeze there blowing the trees around here in port. Lovely view though. Look at that bow. Lovely blue contrasting with the white and the red Limsoll line at the bottom. Boy there, shipmate Neil Woods, welcome aboard. Glad you could join us. Uh, grab yourself uh, some grog on the way down to the galley. Looks like we have quite a number of shipmates up on deck. I don't know if we'll have any waivers today. As you can see, a very different design from the other cruise ships. The balconies are all higher up. There are quite a lot of cabins without balconies, just with uh, just with windows. Yeah, there we have some waivers there. I'm sure I saw some waivers. So we'll go back. Oh no, I can't go that far. There's definitely some waivers there. Yeah, there we go. There we go, some waivers there. Looks like some lady in a billowy outfit. No, more waivers at the front there. Oh, I'm probably waving to Britannia. Get a lot of cross cruise ship waving, I've noticed. I think it must be one of those things. It's like when you drive a certain make of car and you see the same person driving it. Uh, if it's a specialist car, you often, you often get some uh, waving between the vehicles. There might be some horn action going on. I can't hear. One thing I can't hear is myself, and I can't hear the other, the other cameras. There we go. Uh, you can see the difference in design there between the bow of the two ships. Ask for a better day, could you, shipmates? Touch breezy. But very sunny and clear. I hear there's lots of horn action going on, and I can't hear it myself. Rather, rather a shame. The light here has given us a really distinctive view of the stern of Queen Mary 2. Very unusual. No other ship I know has a stern like Queen Mary's 2's here. It's supposedly modelled on a soup spoon. Yeah, the real boulders part and then the shaved off bit at the bottom. The designer was particularly proud of his efforts with Queen Mary 2. Oh, I, guess, I guess he should be really. Very elegant ship indeed. over on Netsky Cam. Like I say, we have more of the silhouette, and this almost reminds me of those sort of 30s Art Deco type graphical posters you might see. They always have that very sharp lines of ships like that. Lots of seagulls flying around. They're all very interested in what the ships churn up. Stick the shipmates on the back of the Queen Mary 2 there. Yeah, that's got to be the place where you want to be, isn't it? View of the Port of Southampton, sun, lots of other cruise ships as you pass. You definitely know you're onto a great cruise there. Off to the fields, nonetheless, which is, I think is unusual for Queen Mary 2. I don't normally see Queen Mary 2 go to the fields. Oh, hey there, shipmate Mark Stanham. Welcome aboard, shipmates. And he thanks for subscribing.
go. Getting a good view over on Itching Camp. Look at that bow there. Very classical set of colours with the blue hole and the white superstructure. Really rather good. Right, so I'm going to keep an eye. We can keep watching, and that's one of the port boats. That's the Harbour Patrol, just shadowing along there. The Queen Mary too. I'm going to keep an eye on what's going on in port ship maintenance. As soon as any of the movements, I'll we'll start following those. But at the moment, let's have a quick look at Britannia. Just a quick look at Britannia. Britannia, we've got uh, nothing going on. No shipmates on the hatch. Nothing going on there. Okay. Enough. We just have acres and acres of Queen Mary 2. I did notice briefly when I was looking through the chat, someone said that when Queen Mary 2 was launched, she was the longest ship, cruise ship. How times have changed. That was a good comment. Oh, there, shipmate Paul B E 2 S 2 driving squared. Welcome aboard, shipmate. Glad you've subscribed. Oh, Paul from Love Cruises tells me the QM2 is black on the bottom. Oh, is it really? It looks it looks blue to me. Maybe it's very dark blue. I'm sure you're right there. Wouldn't be the first time I, I didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah, so you want here this is what I mean about the light and the sun being behind. Uh, unfortunately, this sort of angle does lend to somewhat a silhouetted vision but i think in this case of queen mary too a very elegantly silhouetted vision itching cam is having a funny five minutes oh look no oh, i'm not paying attention i knew this would happen I was too busy, too busy looking at Queen Mary too. Uh, here we go, Arcadia is on the way out. I, that was my prediction that Arcadia would be moving first. Again, that looks like a fairly packed. Oh, look at that, it's packed on top. No, no, what passengers' numbers are, unfortunately. We haven't got the radio working at the moment. But look at that. Look at all these lucky shipmates having a sunny departure from the Port of Southampton with Britannia behind them, Queen Mary 2 has just passed them, Seven Seas Splendour in the distance somewhere, parked on land. That looks very busy. I hope uh, adequately get to the bar to uh, get a rum-based cocktail. You perishing of thirst. Uh, let me check. Hoi there Ken, shipmate Ken, welcome aboard. Seven Seas Splendour is still docked. But Arcadia is on the go. So uh, this is it's getting quite complicated. All these ships are all leaving at the same time. I've discovered. <laughs> I need. Uh, I, I have. I got. A oh, well, there, shipmate Barbara Winkle. Welcome aboard. I do have an extra screen, but I realise I need another extra screen. So we've got uh, Britannia just departing. And here's a very silhouetted vision of Queen Mary 2. And if we look on Itching Cam, we get a much better view of Queen Mary 2 from the side. Oh, there's shipmate Dick Jr. Welcome aboard. So Arcadia is, it looks like Arcadia is turning, doesn't it? That's what you would use, what you would say if you saw that image there. If you actually look on the map, Arcadia is not actually turning. She's just moving away from the dock. It's just the angle of the cameras and the angle of the docks and things. It does make things awkward sometimes. I'm trying to work out which camera is looking at what and where it is. It's often not where you expect. Yeah, it's very sunny down Southampton Walker. Look at look at that really is a silhouetted vision. 
to have a better image on kitchen cam. You can see the sun on the stern. And we've got a vision here of Arcadia. Arcadia is departing for somewhere. A four night round trip cruise to Amsterdam and the Netherlands. Thank you to the Art Blue Spanner Bay Blues. I supplied me with the information. You can see all the seagulls again at the stern. When the propellers spin up, they tend to chop up lots of fish. Oh, we there, shipmate Marcel Zunzig. Zunzig. Apologies, shipmate, if I've mispronounced your name. Welcome aboard, shipmate. Glad you've subscribed to the channel. With their Mike Jones ace, already started the conversation about Queen Mary 2 being the only ocean liner and all the rest being cruise ships. Try not to uh, spend too much time in that line of pedantry, but uh, I get the gist. I get the gist. I mean, top speed alone, Queen Mary 2 is impressive. And an older ship as well. just uh, looking at it the other day Ooh, well over 20 years old almost depends on if, if you're looking at completed dates or launch dates or something but coming up to 20 years old who would imagine it still an impressive looking ship for 20 year old ship I'd say probably got quite a few more years left into it Cruise camp, it's all happening over on cruise camp today. We've got uh, the Britannia, I haven't seen any lines come in. We've got the Red Funnel Ferry in the background, and beyond that, we've got the Hythe Ferry. It's just non stop action in the port of Sometimes we can have hours and hours, and you hardly see a ship. And then all of a sudden, six o'clock on a Friday evening, and it's just non stop. There's the Harbour Patrol boat. I don't know, the small boat there it looks a bit like the Alison McGregor. Let's have a quick look. Mm. Yes, it is. It's the Alison McGregor. She is a uh, charity vessel. Takes people with limited ability, load them on, they load them onto the back and take them for a little, ex a little journey around the port. Typically seeing these sorts of things like large ships moving. Normally cruise ships. Although they do, they do uh, other things as well, which I can't think what they are at the moment. <laughs> uh, no, what do they do? They go and like when shield SS shield halls in and, in and around, and uh, when it's like Bournemouth, I think Bournemouth air display, they do things like that as well. Uh, no movements yet on Britannia. Oh, I'll have a quick look at the map and see. Perhaps Seven Seas Splendour is going to. Take the lead. No, no, 17 Splendor's still here. Oh, it's a, could be a bit of a gamble with which ship's next. I mean, there is a ship, mate, on... Uh... Ahoy there, Ronald with wings. Welcome aboard, shipmate. Sounds like an aviation channel would be more up your street, really, but uh, much appreciated that you joined the channel. Hey, thanks. Red jets shooting over from the Isle of Wight. 20 minutes from the Isle of Wight, from Carol's on the Isle of Wight to the town quay at the Port of Southampton. 
now you can see the crane that's right on the front of Queen Mary 2. And just behind the crane, a little dark, look a bit like a shark fin. That's one of the propeller blades for the Azipods. And that crane's used to lower the propeller blades over the over the side. Hoi right, there, shipmate, Joseph Peterson. Welcome aboard, shipmates. Many thanks for subscribing. So on her world cruise, if she jam damages a propeller blade, which does happen, I mean, you wouldn't think it, but all sorts of strange underwater obstacles. Uh, if she damages a propeller blade, uh, she has carries some spares and they can change them over. I'm told affectionately known as the captain's cufflinks. And they would be mighty large cufflinks. Oh, I haven't looked in the chat for a while. What's going on in the chat? Oh, there, Findy D says, when is Britannia leaving? Britannia is leaving 13, 14 minutes ago. I'm afraid I can't give you more information than that. Uh, or the Jack says six weeks until we go on her in New York. Can't be quick enough. I know the feeling, shipmate. I know the feeling. Um, which camera now? Which camera? Time to change camera. Let's go back to itching camera. Pretty quiet outside the water. Look how flat the water is with this northeast. It's northeasterly. I'm sure it's northeasterly, isn't it? Yep, northeasterly wind. So with this north. With this northeasterly wind, and the water in Southampton water is very calm. Oh, there's your mate, PNX Dave. Walk aboard. There is a bit of a gust, though. We're still gusting, gusting to somewhere near 20, yeah, over 20 knots now. So a bit gusty, uh, but it is at least it is east uh, flat water. Time to get the speedboat out, I think. I do need to be buying a spare part for the speedboat because the uh, captain of the speedboat broke it a while ago and he's emailed me the spare parts I need to get to fix it. The, one of the stators has failed on the outboard and we're only using one stator to supply all four spark plugs instead of having one stator supply two and the other stator supply and the other two. Apparently it's not ideal. Missed a lot of chat. Chat about Queen Mary too. Very uh, draws a lot of content to the a lot of subscribers to the channel. Queen Mary too. Always a firm favourite of all the shipmates. And I, I can understand why. Sorry, I was just uh, watching to see if there's anything happening in Britannia. Nothing. Not, not a lot. Well, there, shipmates. Andrew Jamieson. Welcome aboard, shipmates. Glad you've subscribed. Let's have a look at the map. Maybe the Seven Seas Splendor is on the way. Uh, no, Seven Seas Splendor is parked on land again. <laughs> if you look here, look, see, Seven Seas Splendor, there we go. Uh, something wrong with the IS giving a wrong direction. It's quite amusing. This morning, uh, I think this morning we had, I think there was four, four or five ships in port all pointing the wrong way. Yeah, look at see, look how flat that water is. Surprised we don't have those boiling kitey chaps whizzing around. I think it'd be ideal weather for that. Yeah, I always think the Seven Seas Splendor sounds like a sort of luxury dessert. After my steak and chips, I oh, wouldn't mind a Seven Seas Splendor. Many thank you. So we have both Seven Seas Splendor and Brit and Britannia running late. Both will be due to part six. Uh, Arcadia is kept her deal. She's going. And we are watching Queen Mary two. In fact, I'm going to zoom near the camera. I forgot. I forgot. I've got a camera that's we can use this other camera, can't we? It's very slow there. Internet connection's not brilliant. Oh, I know. I know what to do. I just uh, forgotten something. Uh, 
There we go. That should help. I have to change it to a much lower resolution. There we go. Yeah, if I knew what I was doing, I might be useful. Here we go. Here is Arcadia and Wonder Red Funnel Ferries. As I said before, even though Arcadia is not a particularly large cruise ship, mighty in comparison to the Red Funnel Ferries, and they always seem quite large whenever I travel on them. Most of the things I go on are measured in feet in the region of 30 to 50, not in the region of hundreds. Arcadia is off to Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Perhaps for and some uh, cookies. Uh, hey, Paul, like some Paul, my shipmate Paul says that uh, Seven Sea Splendor is a lovely ship. Aimed more at the premium market. None of your bargain basement cruises on that, which is a shame because he, I think he knows that I was going to ask him. I was going to ask him if uh, he'd hook me up with a passage on the Seven Seas Splendor, but clearly he's already warding me off. I think it's going to be very expensive. I have to save up a few more pennies for that one then, Schmitz. Well, I'm enjoying this race between the Red Funnel. The Red Funnel has clearly got the hammer down. Huh? Ultra luxury, says Shipmate Paul. Paul is. Oh, yeah. There we go. Hang on. Oh, no, no. Let, me, let me do something. Let me do something. Paul Dobson, even though you can't hear him at the moment, but unfortunately we don't seem to be able to connect. He is uh, our, our sponsor of the channel from Love Cruise. Link in the description of the video. If you have any cruising demands from the port of Southampton, drop him a line. Or fact, any other cruising demands. He's very experienced and knowledgeable about where to go, what to do, which ship to get on. Gives me an enormous amount of advice which I just tend to ignore and then go on whichever ship I fancy. <laughs> that's, that's just because I, I'm just more interested in the ship I think than the cruise. Hey, Red Funnel has opened up a sizeable lead here. Still no movements on the lines. Oh, that shipmate's coming out to check. Still no movements on the lines there. Seven Seas Splendor. Seven Seas Splendor still tied up as well. I do wonder sometimes why they have posted times. They don't seem to keep them very often. You can see there in the distance behind Queen Mary 2 is uh, the number. Oh, I can't know. I thought I, would, I can look on the map, but there's a number of, uh, of uh, oil tankers. Endeavour 2, that's what I was going to say. The Endeavour 2 is facing towards us. It's just what Queen Mary 2 is just passing by from the Fawley refinery. Yeah, it seems like uh, each of cam's got a bit of a wobble on today. Netty cam's fine. Netty cam might be shaded a little bit from the breeze when it comes to the north, but a little more exposed when it comes from the south. Funny how they've both got their priorities. Uh, not so many ship bets up on the top deck of Queen Mary 2 now. They must have retired to the buffet. Oh, I've looked at that. What's happening in the chat? Oh, lots of chat, isn't there? Oh, there, Daniel Elliott says, how do I send a message to the captain? Well, I'm here, shipmate. Just stick one in the chat. If you really want to, there's my email address is in the, the thing. We've got somewhere. It's captain at ahoyshipmate.com. But if you just want to send me a chat, well, I do check back occasionally. I do wander off and uh, start uh, looking at the cameras more. And I forget about the chat. We have some newlyweds on Britannia. Well, I think we were asking where they were. Uh, Woolly Beef is asking... What's what Woolly Beef talking about? <laughs> oh, I see. Well, Woolly Beef was wondering how, when the ships are on the land, how do they get them off? 
He's talking about the, uh, the problem with the AIS we're having here at the moment. This one here, 7C Splendor, should not be at that location. She should be parallel to the dock. Still what, plenty of shipmates on the stern there, though, isn't there? Look at the difference in design of stern between Queen Mary 2 and Arcadia. I think it's quite clear which one is the more attractive ship, isn't it? Still no actions on the lines. No, still nothing there. We've got nothing going on. Hmm. Curious. I wonder what's going on there, then. We're up into the 23 minutes worth of delay. Queen Mary 2 is approaching Cowshot Carl, just going past Fall Your Refinery, approaching Cowshot Spit. We then have Arcadia halfway down Southampton Water, and then Britannia still in the dock. And Seven Seas Splendor parked on Horizon Terminal. Ah, here we go. The lines are falling for Britannia. She should be singling up there going quickly, aren't they? She was singled up, so she'll be off in a minute or two. Okay, keep an eye on that as Queen Mary 2 does approach. Trying to approach cow shots. It is halfway down. Small of the ship, oh, difficult to see. Try to zoom in to quite. Zoom in. Not sure where Britannia is off to. I'm sure one of my excellent spanners will be able to help. Well, then Daniel Edits says it's possible to get live radio streams. Uh, not at the moment, I'm afraid, shipmates. I have a technical issue and I need to reinstall some hardware. Those lovely thick lines coming in. It will be returning, though. That's hopefully, I say shortly, but some of these things are just, just beyond my control, I'm afraid. Unfortunately, I'm only the captain of this YouTube channel, not of anything important. Uh, ahoy there, shipmate Merv Alton says, uh, are you allowed to say which map you used mine so far behind? I could drive to Southampton from Bristol tonight and still have the time to board QM2. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, yes, I use Vessel Finder. There are a number out there, Marine Traffic, Vessel Finder, um, I don't know, there's, there's a few of them. The reason I use Vessel Finder is because I have a AIS receiver in port and I contribute to the ship movements. That's why the ship movements in the ports on, on uh, Vessel Finder are, qu are quite up to date, because that's me doing it. In fact, it's probably me that's making the seven, the, making the seven seas splendor stick in port. I suspect there's probably something wrong with my receiver. <laughs> I probably need to go and check it. I've had a few more lines come in on Britannia. Excellent spanner Kevin too has filled me in with some useful information. Britannia's off on a four uh, from Port Six Berth on a seven night cruise to the fjords. Well, we're all be following Queen Mary two. I wonder if the visibility would be good enough to see Queen Mary two in the distance. It'd be quite impressive, wouldn't you? Looks like a few more lines are coming off. I think it looks like all of them. So that's the one left. Can't imagine the strain that would be on that single line. Again, we have another size comparison with Queen Mary 2 on the red funnels. It does make the Queen Mary 2 look a bit sort of top heavy. I don't mean that in a sort of condescending way, it just does look a bit top heavy. I think it's designed to cut through the gigantic seas that you'd experience in the Atlantic. 
just another couple of lines coming in on Britannia. We can't, I don't think we can see the stern lines on Britannia. Britannia's not as big as Arvia and Iona. They are. Oh, there's shipmate Jill Clark. Welcome aboard, shipmates. Many thanks for subscribing to the channel. Yeah, there must be a lot of strain on those points. It's single lined, singled up, as the captain would term it. Little and large approaching the end of Southampton Water. That's a few yachts out there, isn't there? I can see the Bramble's marker just to the right between Queen Mary 2 and the land. That's the uh, cowshot spit marker and the Bramble's marker's behind that. Must be time for the uh, Bramble's cr cricket match soon. Uh, and it looks like the last lines are coming in for Britannia. So she will depart very shortly now. She'll probably nudge back ever so slightly and then start to head on out and straight down Southampton Water. Now, this is going to get tricky now because now I need to start driving stop driving three cameras hmm. on two three devices and use the fourth device to operate the stream okay so bear with me shipmates if if i go quiet it's because i'm concentrating i'm probably sticking my tongue out I'm concentrating you know you know how it is when you concentrate hello let's have a look oh we've got quite a few shipmates on the balconies we see the stern lines? No, we can't see the stern lines. I didn't think so. Just behind the ocean terminal there. Information from Paul at Lockridge says that it's got an incredibly high crew to passenger ratio. 548 crew and 746 passengers. That is phenomenal. Isn't it? see cruise camps working properly today as well. Had a bit of intermittent trouble with cruise camp. Our friendly Chinese supports can't seem to get it working. They do a few things to it, it seems to work, and then it just seems to go a bit back to its old ways. I used the fabled technological solution of turning it off and back on again. That seems to work for a little while. Getting a great view here on Itching Can shipments. Got that bit of a procession going on the solid. Got the Mary 2 at the very distance and Arcadia closer to us and Britannia is just here. Oh, there's a chap there walking up. That's his own personal balcony on top of the wind bridge. I do have the noise of the itching cam on so I'm not sure if there's been hooting and honking. I'll probably turn it off in a second because you're probably getting fed up with it. Um, yes is the answer to that question. Let's just go over here. I'm just going to let one of the spanners do netly cam. That will uh, relieve me of uh, computational load. There we go. Oh, so there we go. It's quite a backwards move. We managed to catch the backwards move. That's good. That's what I was explaining about earlier. Quite a backwards move to begin with. And then uh, Britannia will start to head forwards. Lots of shipmates out on their balconies. Lots of sh shipmates without their shirts on. Shirtless shipmates. Careful how you say that after a roll too. <laughs> it's a bit early in the evening for a ditty like that, I think. Perhaps we might see some wavers. The, uh, there is a one shipmate's, I think it was their daughters on here with their husband, newlywed off on their honeymoon cruise, I guess. I thought that was someone waving. I think they're just uh, rubbing their hair. No, oh, no wavers yet today. This is unusual. I think he's picking his nose. Queen 
Saint Mary Two is heading down the end. All these seagulls, lots of seagulls around. Still got Arcadia. We might get three cruise ships on the screen at the same time. We've we've done it before. It does take a little while, but we have done it before. Waivers today, shipmates, and this is disappointing. <laughs> Britannia's off to the fields as well, off to the fields along with the other cruise ship, which I forgot the name of. <laughs> oh, Green Mary 2. Um, honestly, shipmates, I have not been in the run yet. It's just one of those days. Yeah, that's a good population on the balconies, isn't it? Oh, we there, shipmate Stephen Roberts. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, Mr. Roberts. You've got a good nautical film named after you. Can't see any wavers, though. Where are all these wavers? Come on, shipmates, start waving. Stern. See what's going on down this end. Queen Mary two in the red funnel there. Looks like some sort of rib blasting up. Not much going on in cows. We'll get Queen Mary two there probably about half now. So I would imagine. And there we go. We've got a fairly decent view. Arcadia. Can we move to? Good. I'll zoom in on that. Oh, I need to follow this ship as well, don't you? Because that's the one we're looking at. Hey, there's some people dancing on their balcony there. They're having a rocking time, aren't they? Grooving and partying in their stern balcony suite. Overlooking the sunny port of Southampton. He'd almost be tempted to say she's picked up quite a bit of speed already, hasn't she? I don't know what the nought to, nought to 6 knots speed is. That's, uh, that's certainly moving. We're in trouble overtaking with the camera. Two Red Funnels, Queen Mary 2 and Arcadia all on the screen at the same time. That's not bad. Two ferries, two cruise ships. It's starting to get slightly into choppier water over there. As she enters the Solent. Look at Seven Sea Splendor, see if Seven Sea Splendor has moved. Seven Sea Splendor is on the move as well. Alrighty. Uh, they're only about half an hour ish late each. Seven Sea Splendor and Britannia. They both both choose to depart at six. Uh, Arcadia did, but they did for some reason. No, but we'll still catch them all. I don't think we're going to get four cruise ships on the screen at the same time, although we might do. That's, cool. That's Queen Mary 2 rounds Bramble Bank. Oi there, shipmate Mark Squires, welcome aboard. I'm guessing with a departure time of 6.30, there could be a lot of people heading down to the buffet. It is what a sunny day here in Port Salad. A quick look at the chat's been there. The past has been there. Oh, Eddie Burley says not bad considering she had to get sort of down. That's true. Maybe she had sea legs. Ship 
checkmate. Ray Shakespeare says, which people didn't keep mentioning the fields, I'm pining. Mm -hmm. I see. With their water clones, it's a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day, shipmate. I think it's a bit windy out there, and it's not as warm as you'd imagine, so I think, I think you've definitely chosen the best spot here. I think it's 18C. If we quick look this way, what can we see? We can see Queen Mary 2 starting to turn. Look at that, turning quite fast. We'll see that on each cam. So we've got red jet, two red funnels, Queen Mary 2, lots of yachts. It's busy out there on Friday afternoon on Southampton Water. Oh, we're there. Paul M says up on Portstown Hill we'll see Queen Mary 2 shortly. I bet you've got a great view on that. A lovely view right to the way. I don't know how far you see Portstown Hill. Portstown Hill's in Portsmouth and I imagine you see somewhere towards the centre of the Solent, all the way across, down to the forts, down to the Nab Anchorage, somewhere that way. Great view. It's an excellent place. There's, there is some car parks up at the top of there, there? Where I, I think you get this wonderful view of the extensiveness of the ships. You really get a scale of all those balconies and all those little lines of cabins. Yeah, it's monumental. And there are a few brave souls who decided to skip the uh, buffet for the moment. impression of how quickly they turn around. Straight down the side of the ship. There's our partying family there on the, the middle of the stern. They were dancing away earlier. Not such, such a good view on the port side. We are in shadow here. Uh, I missed the old days when I had multiple cameras and I could up, up between the views. Just hoping to reinstate that at some point. Again, smooth. this is a work in progress. Quick mode two going around cash shots bits. And there's Arcadia, all the lovely yachts out there. Oh, and that's a uh, little one at the bottom there is there's Alison McGregor. Going on a cow's cam, surprisingly, the weight as well. You can see all the seagulls very keen to taste some of that spow chowder that the engines churn up. Look at that, they, well, they're churning up all the fish and jellyfish and things that are in the water. See someone dropping a line down there. That's not entirely sure what that's for. Trying to catch a fish? Catch a seagull? <laughs> I've not seen that before. There we go. There's the thrust from the propulsion of unusually a Southampton registered cruise ship. We don't often see them registered in the Port of Southampton. Normally they are registered in somewhere far more exotic.
Oh, hi there, Moggy Travels. It says, I'm, Brit I'm on Britannia now sitting in the sunset bar. Well, give us a wave, shipmate. I'm super jealous of you in the sunset bar. A sunny day, departing the Port Southampton. Very jealous indeed. Shipmates, Moggy Travels. Let's have a little zoom in. I'm going to try and find you now. Hurry to me. I guess you can be up here somewhere. Uh, shipmates, Moggy Travels. I think is enjoying some sort of cocktail up here at the Sunset Bar. A wonderful view of the Port of Southampton in the sun. Out of the breeze, because you'll have a tail breeze. The breeze will be from the stern at the moment. Check on that north. Yeah, it's still north easterly breeze. So we'll have a north easterly breeze, which means in this sort of, as you're travelling along, you won't feel too much, so it'll be even more pleasant. I can't see Moggy Travels. No, I'm going to stop looking because it's making me jealous. <laughs> oh, welcome aboard, shipmate. Shipmate home. Jesus Rivera. Jesus Rivera. Many thanks for subscribing. has actually gone past the dock head. That's the Hythe Pier over there. It's the Hythe Ferry. It's just parked at the moment. And this is Britannia. Seven Seas Splendor is on the move. Let's have a look. When will Seven Seas Splendor? Seven Seas Splendor still... Oh, Seven Seas Splendor is going backwards. Well, that's to be expected, I suppose. Fast rib there. Probably be another ten fifteen minutes before we see Seven Seas Splendor. Currently in view is Britannia, Queen Mary Two, and uh, Queen Mary Two's. Disappeared. She's gone off off the uh, screen. Arcadia is down at the end of Southampton Water. Probably just start turning around Southampton. So around Cowshot Spit, and we'll f we can follow out on Itching Cam. Because Itching Cam's now pointing not quite so much in directly into the sun. Splendor, there you go. Just starting the turn, so I reckon about 10, 10 minutes thereabouts, and we'll probably see you shortly. Unless, of course, you get stuck on landing, which would seem to be a frequent problem today. the chat what's going on in the chats oh moggy travels have been uh, tormenting us with his shenanigans of watching solid ships from the sunset bar on the whoops too fast on the back of britannia there very good ship mate very good boy there lulu uh, travels on 
Britannia in August. Can't wait. Excellent. Well done, shipmates. <laughs> oh, we dare shipmate Brian Jones. Many thanks for subscribing. Welcome aboard. Like 70 Splendors a little way away, but she'll be on this sort of part of the screen eventually. And there we go. There is Arcadia just about to complete the turn. So we're getting pretty much seamless ship coverage all evening here. This is going rather well, isn't it? It just could have been slightly busier. I'm not sure that I'm not sure that I've ever done Seven C Splendor before a live stream. I think I have actually. Now I think about it. Oh, lots of power boats coming back in. Had a lovely day out. Coming back to wash and change and get something to eat. Oh, shipmate Muggy Trevels says he just saw himself. Oh, you didn't give us a wave then, did you, shipmate? It's a bit of a shame. I was looking forward to a wave. Oh, wait there, shipmate Daniel Elliott says, how much does it cost to subscribe? Doesn't cost anything, shipmate, it's all free of charge. All complimentary, just got to hit that subscribe button and it's all free. Doesn't cost a penny. Our membership will be coming back at some point, but I'm having a, a very long discussion with YouTube at the moment, which seems to revolve around robotic replies being received uh, and ref keep referring me to the help which doesn't seem to help I've had this problem with YouTube before they're very quick to turn things off very so to turn them back on again bit of a drag but I'm working for it shipmates so don't panic I, I'm going as fast as I can I've escalated it to the next level I think is the sort of terminology they, they use Oh, hi there, shipmates. Charlie Smith, welcome aboard. Many thanks for subscribing. So quite a busy day today, shipmates. So it was four ships. Queen Mary 2 is off the screen. Arcadia is probably just off the screen by now. Uh, no, no, not that one. No, no, Arcadia is just about to go off the screen. Uh, Britannia is... Britannia's on this one? Yeah, Britannia's on this one. Uh, nothing on cows yet, or we'll be expecting Queen Mary 2 shortly on cows. Uh, and there's one more, isn't there? Oh, yeah, one more is the Seven Sea Splendor, which is just a little bit in the middle, swing around, swinging around. A bit that map needs updating. There we go. We're oh, just about to head this way, so I reckon somewhere in the region of 10 minutes. Right. Um, which, which ship should we look at now? I think we'll go back to Britannia. She's the closest. Well, there, Robert Fleming asks if there are any numbers available to see. So, most apologies, shipmate, I don't have the radio connected, so I, I don't get, didn't get any numbers there, unfortunately. From what I've been hearing, though, they are all fairly busy, so I'd imagine you're know, looking at somewhere near maximum capacity on all of the ships. Queen Mary 2, I'd imagine there was somewhere in the region of sort of two and a half thousand passengers. Britannia. It's got a maximum capacity of 3,647. I suspect somewhere in the region of low 3,000s, 3,200 or something. Seems to be the, the uh, general number of people we've got on board when the ships are really busy. They never seem to right, quite reach. I think mean, some people pay for single occupancy, so even though they have a maximum capacity, well, not all cabins are double occupancy. There are some single occupancy cabins. Well, there's shipmate Alan Coey says, what ships are in Southampton tomorrow? Good question, shipmate. I like a man who's forward thinking. I certainly haven't thought about it. Uh, I'm out on the water tomorrow afternoon myself, so I'm not entirely sure I'll be back in time. So often why I don't set live streams up too much in advance. If I am back in time, no, I will go live. Uh, oh, there we go. So you can see... 
Queen Mary 2 just in the distance of the red funnel poking over the land. So tomorrow we will have another four ship departure. Oh, excuse me, departure. Four o'clock Sky Princess, followed by Norwegian Dawn at five o'clock, then Iona at six, and MSC Virtuosa also at six. So a busy weekend here in Paul Seven. Sunday is also three cruise ships Norwegian Prima and the Seas and Norwegian Prima. Something wrong there. Something wrong with the, my information. I don't think that cruise ships come to this. The cruise ship's only out for an hour and comes back again. No, there's something wrong there. There we go. We can see three cruise ships here. We have Queen Mary 2. Arcadia and Britannia. Just make that out. Quite impressive, isn't it? Arcadia looks a bit like a building. Queen Mary 2 is in the very distance, and Britannia's here. So I think we're going to line up very well today. Sometimes you get this fantastic view of three cruise ships. Well, you can just about make it out there, can't you? I think that little yellow building you can see on top of the hill is Osborne House. I'm not sure about that, but I think it is. And quite, yes, if, if, it was, if Britannia was a little bit slower, no, no, hang on, no, Britannia was slower, no, if Queen Mary 2 was faster, Arcadia was slower, then they, they could have all been at the same sort of point, couldn't they? But didn't quite get there. Boy, there, Anthony Blakesley it says, Has the port of Southampton ever been gridlocked? Well, yes, it has shipmate, but not on the water, more on land. Uh, the water often gets does get a bit gridlocked if there is a large ship coming in and all the channels are clear channel vessels. Then they have to slot out one by one and all in turn. So, yes, it can get sort of gridlocked from an, an aquatic viewpoint. But also the ports, when we have a lot of port uh, shoot cruise ships at the weekend, uh, we might have five ships departing and five ships arriving all the same day somewhere in the region of probably 30,000 passengers arriving in the port. On top of that, um, oh, right, wrong one. there we go, there we go. On top of that, we have, there we go, on Cow's Cam. Thank, thank you for, I think that was shipmate, the one I didn't, one of the shipmates told me about that, let's see who it was. Uh, yes, and then there's a sound of football game. It gets incredibly busy. And then traffic just comes to a halt, gridlocked everywhere. Absolute nightmare. So I think you were asking more about the ships though, weren't you, being gridlocked rather than the traffic. But, but equally is is a similar problem. Oh, shipmate Alan Cowie says, what's the biggest ship that comes in? The biggest ship that comes in, it depends on your definition of biggest, I suppose. If we're talking about cruise ships, then it's probably... Hmm, I don't know. Probably one of the sort of celebrities or anthems. They're quite big. Probably one of the anthem ships. If we're talking ships in general, then it'll be one of the container ships, one of the HMM ships. Uh, they are somewhere in the region of 23,000 TEU or 20 foot equivalent units. Uh, and they are quite considerably bigger than a cruise ship in length, breadth, height, weight, uh, just generally all round, much, much bigger. Does look quite calm waters there, doesn't it, on the uh, Isle of Wight? This camera's operated by our excellent spanner Etienne. He's really good at keeping an eye on the waters of the Solent, making sure we don't miss out on anything. Many thanks for that, Etienne. Well done. I did remember this time. I often can't seem to quite coordinate myself. 
I know it sounds like a theme, but it is a bit, it is a, bit of a theme. <laughs> um, which camera now? There we go. Oh, this one. There we go, there's Britannia. And there's Britannia again. There's Britannia and... Just in the background, you can, at the stern to stern, you can see Queen Mary 2. Seven Sea Splendor should be on screen any time. Ah, what a choice now. I can move. Hmm. I can move. Netlicam. Let's have a look. Netlicam is doing quite a good job following down, down uh, Southampton Water. Itching Cam has got a bit of a view of both. And I think Seven Sea Splendor is going to be on. Cruise cam now. So let's go with that, shall we? I've made a decision. Seven Seas Splendor is one of the sort of ultra luxury cruise ships. There'll be no cheap cabins on this one, shipmates. Paul from Love Cruise, who's uh, giving me some sponsorship to me out with some cruises if you do fancy a cruise just check in the description click on the link he'll uh, help you out sort you out he knows all about the port of Southampton what's good what's not good I think he's uh, telling me to avoid the seven seas splendor out of my price league he knows best if we'll get any premium waivers on the Seven Seas Splendor. That's a rather interesting vessel coming out of Hythe Marina there. I'm distracted by the power though. Look, what is that then? That must be some sort of looks like an axopalm, but it's got a swept back. I wonder if that's a uh, saxador or something. It's in the cockpit design. Hmm. Oh, sorry, we're here for cruise ships, aren't we? A quick look and see if there's any on, on their balconies waving. Doesn't look like, like anyone on their balconies, does it? No. no. Oh no, there's a couple. One, yep, yeah, one shipmate at the top there. I think the chances of seeing a waiver on the Seven Seas Splendour are remote indeed. A couple on the top. Maybe the very expensive premium buffet is already open. Maybe they don't have a buffet. Maybe it's not that sort of cruise ship. Maybe it's fine dining only. I'd say not a, a desperately inspiring ship. Any say fairly, say fairly bland. So, what I'm saying, it's generic looking. Not a, not unattractive. Just uh, not not desperately interesting. But I don't think you go on the Seven Seas Splendour for the design of the ship. I think you go there for the quality of the service, the level of amenities, and the lovely food. Had a catastrophic failure there, shipmates. The oh, something's broken. Cruise cam's broken. Well, that's uh, yeah. No, no, yes, no. Yep, yeah. no, no, yep, yeah. no, no. No, I think cruise cam's broken. Have to flick back to Netly Cam now, uh, or Itching Cam. I'm gonna go over here. Not sure why cruise cam has just thrown a wobbler. 
That is, that is the technical term for it. Yeah, Chris Cam has definitely gone wonky. It's a high maintenance beast, is Cruise Cam. Does provide lovely imagery. There we go, it's back again now. Does provide lovely imagery, but does insist on being a little bit flaky. You can see Seven Sea Splendor is not as large as Britannia. It's more difficult to see it over the Queen Elizabeth II terminal. Right, Shipbits, if you have enjoyed this broadcast and you keen to know more, do think about subscribing to the Southern Ships YouTube channel. You'll be welcome aboard and you'll be notified if we, any live streams come up in the future. And we'll greatly appreciate your patronage, of which, speaking, we do have some patrons. I do appreciate all my patrons' efforts, all the PayPal donators and the channel memberships when I get that working again. Well, that's quite a busy day we've had in the Port of Southampton. It's been a busy day tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'll be able to live stream tomorrow. It all depends on my act aquatic activities myself, but I shall definitely let you know. So, uh, without further ado, I'd just like to thank all the spanners that are in the chats because I couldn't do it without all the spanners. They know way more than I do. Here's Arcadia over on Cow's Cam, whistling by. So he picked up quite a bit of speed over here. The spanners know way more than I do. Keep answering all your questions in the chat. Answer all my questions when I don't know what's going on. Absolutely brilliant. And, yeah, so... Uh, keep them peeled we've got quite a lot of ships coming up this time of year a disney um whatever it's called disney dream in i think it's july somewhere so that'll be exciting and that's arcadia whistling past cows on the isle of wight but yes i shall keep following the ships out ship mates it's good joy have been at the roll really uh, but yeah, till next time.